Well, as construction picks up on the I-4 Ultimate project, more people are expected to turn to SunRail every day as an alternate. And as SunRail enters its second year, few realize our experiment with commuter rail goes back more than a century. Mike Holfeld has a story of a forgotten footnote in Central Florida history. In some cities, history is all around you. Here in Central Florida, you have to dig a little deeper. I hadn't seen this one photograph here. No one knows that better than Rollins College historian Jack Lane. I turn up things in these archives that you would not believe. After 37 years of study, oh, well, that's part of being a historian. Oh, he's yeah. still uncovering new details about our past. Here is a much better picture of it. Few more ambitious than Central Florida's first commuter rail. It was a modern idea to build a line that was simply a commuter line. Beginning in 1889, the train you see here traveled six miles from Orlando to Winter Park. It's a part of the lore of this college. The tracks wound their way along the shores of some of our most beautiful lakes. Probably if you could go there right now, it would be, you would have mansions sitting on that spot right now. In fact, an early investor called it the scenic road. The views were pretty nice. They ran through some beautiful countryside. But passengers, mostly students from Rollins College, had another name, the Dinky Line. Dinky? It was dinky in every sense of the word, dinky. <laughs> it was small. It was unreliable. It was a joke. A typical fare was 15 cents. It bought you a slow, rough, and potentially dangerous ride. They apparently laid the track very quickly, and it wasn't well. The beds were not well laid. And so the train was always bumping along, and according to the students, and jumping the tracks all the time. The line ended at Rollins College along the shores of Lake Virginia, a decision that would alter campus design for years to come. The college um, did something not very wise from the very beginning. It decided to face the city rather than the lake. And the railroad contributed to that because you look out here from the, from the college to the lake and you see this ugly track. And weeds were growing up around it. So the lakefront was just ugly, tell the truth. In the end, the Dinkies days were numbered. Its demise was with, you know, technology. There was little the dinky could do to compete with the times. By the 1920s, Americans had become obsessed with automobiles, and that whole idea of having commuter rails disappeared. Today, as more of us are looking for ways to get off the road, the story of commuter rail in Central Florida continues. In a way, this was an idea that if it had caught on would have been wonderful instead of building commuter lines, they built roads. In Winter Park, Mike Holfeld, Local 6. We love those old photos. That's a trip down memory lane. Now, if you want to dig even deeper into Central Florida's rail history, the Winter Park History Center is featuring an exhibit called Whistle in the Distance, the Trains of Winter Park. We've also included additional photos and an extended interview with historian Jack Lane on our Local 6 Facebook page. So check it out. Yeah, really amazing history right there.